welcome to episode six of the Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV. I'm Jarlene Canan and I'm delighted to be joined by Tipperary Camogie PRO, Philly Ryan, and Torda Sarsfield Camogie player and PRO, Keisha McCormick. Folks, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks, Jarlene. Um, we're going to look Thanks, back Charlie. on the Littlewoods Ireland Division 1 and 2 games at the weekend. There's mixed fortunes for Tipperary in Division 1. And we had a great win against Waterford in Clumbell Sports Ground, winning 2 16 to 11 points. Um, unfortunately, the intermediates were beaten in Latin Rye, right, um, losing on a scoreline of 2 14 to 2 7. We'll start off with the Division 1 game. Casey, I know you watched this one closely. Um, is it fair to say that Claude McIntyre's goal after 20 seconds really set the tempo for the game? Yeah, I think um, it kind of to put the marker down, didn't it? Like Watford were that short that one game, like Tip had had it week four against Cork, and that was nearly the proof that right there and then was Clodagh going through. She knew your mind of Orla, how athletic she was, bursting through Orla Dwyer. Um, she really, we were all, I was watching with a couple of my sister and a couple of my friends, we were all commenting how similar she was, and it just, um, just going through for goal only one thing on her mind really and that kind of set the tone for the tip team for the whole match then like they were just relentless and they had a point to prove I suppose after the week um, previous against Cork Yeah I was thinking that as well did you feel the fact that we had a game under our belt and Waterford came in cold I suppose was a big factor for both teams performances Oh I'd say it was massive like the, the tip obviously benefits so much like I think even um, they were saying that management Bill was saying that after the Cork match, like you think you're at a certain point before the before, at training and doing your own bit, like and then you play a match and you it's kind of like a real life, and um, you get a shock. I suppose they got a shock against Cork and you definitely. And then I suppose Watford are feeling that way now after playing Tip. Like you can't beat match practice and playing um, like championship games or league games. Like that's when they're going to see who really is the toughest. Like and Tip really benefit from the Cork match. And I suppose. Waterford just had a bit slower coming out off like what I think Tip had eleven points and Waterford had two. Like it was just it was evident from the start, like Tip were on a a different pace really compared to Waterford. Yeah. Philly, you were in that and right um in the, for the division two game. Um I know in your match report you commented that Tipperary had the wind in the first half. I suppose watching online it was hard to gauge how strong that wind was. Were you worried at half time when we were only level? After playing with the advantage of the win, uh, yes, because uh, Galway uh, probably performed better than Tip in that first half, and uh, one absolutely magnificent save from Sarah Quigley. Uh, the girl must have been within five or ten meters of, of Sarah when she took a rasper, and Sarah managed to save it. And then another save just before half time. So we went in level. Um, Sarah had made two fantastic saves, and also Jenny had. Um, scored from a long-range free into the top corner, which the Galway goalie misjudged. So that's a difference of nine points, if you look at it that way, which we were probably, um, uh, might have gone another way on a, a different day. So we were in level, but probably fortunate to be level, and had played with the wind. But uh, still, I, I gave Tip a bit of hope, because uh, we'd finished the, the first half strongly, and had a, a good few attacks at the end of the first half. So um, uh, what a shock we got in the first uh, four minutes of the second half, when Galway hit us with 2-3 without reply. So it was kind of match over, gone from a draw to nine points down and only four minutes gone in the second half. And Galway with, with a strong breeze for the rest of the half. It was really was an uphill struggle from there on in. And where would you put that, you know, 2-3 in a couple of minutes um, without reply from Galway? Was it a lapse of concentration from tip or was it, you know, Galway up the tempo or with the wind or what do you think was the main factor? Uh, the wind wasn't that strong, so the, main, the two, two main factors was a little bit of um, changing of positions by Galway up front. Uh, some seriously speedy wing forwards and corner forwards on the Galway uh, team. They've obviously some good minors and, and uh, uh, young players coming through with a lot of pace. Uh, there's an island, I can remember her first name. She's very fast. A couple of Galway girls are really pacey there. And uh, so we, we were a bit disorganised as who was marking who there in the first five minutes. And bef- after that, then we got a hold of it again and we finished only losing by seven points. So uh, we actually reduced the lead during the next 25 minutes uh, and fought hard right to the end. And, and management, Keen Trace and his management team brought on a few subs, brought in a bit of pace as well. So uh, we actually finished the game fairly well. Um, 
in, in level with Galway as well in, in, in standard, but just that four minute period cost us the match, I think, you know. Yeah, and um, just going back to the Division One game, um, I suppose a big talking point, Katie, was um the performance of Caught the Van. She scored 12 points, eight from freeze, 145, and three from play. Um, is it fair to say that Waterford just couldn't handle her? They'd no one that was able to mark her. Can anyone ever really handle her? Like it doesn't matter who you're playing, Kilkenny, Galway. Like she never had a bad day. Has anyone ever seen Caught Van have a bad day? I haven't anyway. And I've been playing her since I was like she's been causing nightmares for full back lines, centre back lines. Um, we're, we're, they're kind of looking for is the next caught the van, aren't we? Like in tip, like we want that second person. It feels like um, Cork, you know, everyone else seems that they have Orla Cronin and Damien O'Connor. You know, it's two big scores. Like, and we're kind of looking yep. for that second person to stand up and kind of. I know no one else is going to be on the freeze. You only have one person on freeze, but someone else will be getting three, four, or five points from play. You're looking for that person to stand up beside her and. Maybe take a bit of like weight off her shoulders. Like I imagine for Caught, it must be hard one going out every day and knowing you have to be the number one forward, like tip her line on you that much. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, Kate Lynch was on her, like Kate Lynch from Gold here. And like, they were saying, the commentators were saying, like she was doing a good job. And I suppose she was like, um, the call is probably the, one of the hardest forwards to mark in, in Ireland. Like, but it's never an easy day and especially imagine your first match going out in the leagues after not playing for so many months and you're going out marking caught the van I suppose Waterford didn't try anyone else on her either they just kind of accepted that that was going to be Kate Lynch's job to man mark her and they stuck with it and I suppose a lot of her scores were from like she scored great scores from play but like a lot of it was from play balls from girls working hard and winning their freeze so yeah I suppose she was the biggest headache for Waterford though and Philly, would you agree with that? I know you were in Cork the first day. Cork got 10 points out of 16 and 12 points out of 16 against Waterford. Uh, do you think we're over-reliant on Cork? Or do, is she just our marquee forward? Like, is she our Joe Canning or, you know, in terms of hurling or TJ Reid or Kilkenny and we just need to set up um, around Cork? Or do you think we're over-reliant on her? Um. It's it's hard to know when when Caught uh, was playing full forward the first few minutes uh, against uh, Cork. Um, not enough ball goes into Caught if you're against wind or something. So it's hard to persist with Caught uh, wing as uh, full forward if you're against the wind and you might be tempted to bring her out further to to come get on some ball. But um, really there was a spell there in the Cork match where the Cork midfielders were scoring points and far out. Ash Maloney got Ashling. Thompson got three on the trot there in, in, in the first half against us. You, you To win matches, you really need, need your half forward line and your midfield line scoring also. And so um, Tipperary needs needs scores coming from all parts of the, the field. Even even Cork, uh, is it um, Hannah Looney and uh, uh, Chloe Sigerson can score from wing backs as well. So they can score from 90 yards. So um, uh, other county teams have, have serious um, long range scorers. We just need to, Arena Friday scored two long range, two both points from outside the 45 in Park Key for, for which fantastic points. So we need more, a little bit more of that, uh, some, some long range scorers. Mary Ryan was scoring from, like, she's scoring from full back. Karen is taking shots from centre back. I think it's just like more consistently doing that, you know, like the way Cork are doing, like the way Galway are doing, like the way Kilkenny are doing, of Grace Walsh. Just more of that, like, and then. So Cot's going to stay being caught the van. She's still going to be amazing. It's just everyone else stepping up. Like she is the Joe Canning. She is the um Ann Dalton. Like she's our star. Like you know in the forward line, and we're not taken from that. But other players need to be getting on that score sheet as much. They're well, not as much. Even half is what she's getting on. Like that's what's going to push Tip that extra level. I think anyway. Yeah, I suppose we could say the same with the intermediate team, Philly. Um. I know Jenny Grace dominated the scoreboard. Obviously, she's on the freeze, um, but she did most of the scoring in the first two games. And uh, Jelan Quirk and Janelle Matter both uh, scored from play. But we really need to get more forwards on the score sheets. Yeah, um, now uh, Jelan Quirk and um, Claire Hogan looked look dangerous um, against uh, Galway. They both had pace and play, played very well. And in the second half, uh, Mary Burke was very dominant at midfield, winning a lot of possession. Uh, with the wind in the first half, Courtney Ryan's clearances were huge. 
big long clearances to give down to our forwards. So they were they were a great advantage. And Kira Ryan from Silver Mines had a fantastic first half, and uh, she cleared a lot of ball out of defence as well. So there was some good performances up in Atten Rye, and uh, but again, uh, too reliant on Jenny Grace for scores. Uh, we need more 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 forward scoring in intermediates as well. Remember, Geraldine, we were saying that at the Cork match, like the Cork forwards in the Division Two match the week previous. Um, the Cork forwards four scored from play in the first half. And then they were bringing on subs into the forward line, replacing those girls that had scored in the first half in the forwards. And then they were coming on, they were the ones scoring the goals in the second half. They were just replacing pace and ability to score with pace and ability to score. Like, and it was that the, the it wasn't all all the score. When you were looking at the stats at the end, it wasn't one or two players that had scored on that team as well. It was they were dispersed across the forward line, even into the midfields. And that's what it just feels like is kind of lacking at the moment. Yeah, speaking Oops. about Cork there, um, I the, the the group is is funny, I suppose, a bit at the moment. Like Cork and Tip, I didn't think there was much between them the first day. Kerry had beaten Galway by three points, but um, uh, what you call it? Galway gave us, you know, a good beating, and and then Kerry got a, a hammering from Cork. So it's hard to know where everyone is at. I suppose are Cork better than what we saw? Um, are Galway much better than what they played against Kerry? Uh, or did Kerry, you know, play bad the last day? I suppose we're playing Kerry now this weekend, Philly, isn't that right? Yeah, so just uh, uh, one point uh, that the Galway manager made uh, after the game, they said, Galway selector made, was they found the trip to Kerry in cars very difficult. They didn't leave in time, I think, and just were tired playing against Kerry uh, in the first round. And again, it's the first time back in your know, first games, you can be stuck to the ground, and they were stuck to the ground against Kerry. They let it at half time, but Kerry came back and beat them. Um, uh, I was talking to Darrow O'Crohour from the Cogie Association correspondent, and he informs me that if Cork beat Galway and we beat Kerry by 15 points, that we go through. So um, we're not out of the jet. So uh, uh, that's an interesting point that uh, mathematically, uh, if Cork win all three matches and the other three all get a game off each other, uh, there's no head-to-head -head because we've all beaten each other, so it goes to score difference. So that's an interesting one. So maybe we shouldn't fully drop the heads about the intermediates. Um, they have a bit of time to prepare for championship, but they also have a chink in this uh, uh, competition also. Um, looking at the Galway last Sunday, I think Galway could beat Cork up in Galway because that match is in Galway. Home advantage seems to be a, a big help. No travel and uh, seems to be an advantage having home uh, the home advantage for these games. Yeah, definitely a good point there about traveling and in the cars. Um, just moving back to the senior team again, um, uh, Bill and his management team, you know, had a new midfield pairing at the weekend. We saw Arena Friday and Emer uh, Lukeman start out there. Emer will be more familiar from the backs. I suppose Arena has played a lot of midfield um, she brings a lot of energy, a lot of pace to it. Um, who, who would you like to see midfield, Katie, come championship or... I know Neve Trassi's out injured at the moment, but say if we had everyone back fish, uh, who would you who would who would be your ideal midfield pairing? Um uh, I feel like I'm Bill Milani now picking something. Um Arena, like what we're saying, what you said scored the, the week previous, three two points from midfield, long range, like that's what you want. That and she's wiry as well, isn't she? Like, and she's so athletic and natural ability and um She's a slight frame, like she's moving quickly around the field. Neve Trassi would be a great one um, to link up, but I suppose like, Neve is a, a powerhouse going through, isn't she? When she gets the ball and she goes in those solar runs and she has that really long range in her strike, that would be a good pair. And look, I'm, you can really say I'm biased here. I'm always going out about Karen, but like if Karen's not centre back, I think her next best position is midfield. She played midfield with us last year in the club championship. Usually she played centre back. That was the big change that happened for us. And, that was, I think that was really the difference between us winning and losing another county final. Like she averaged on one, two in the championship, the club championship. Now I know that's different, but you're getting two points off it from play from midfield. Isn't that great? Like, but then she's one of those players that like, well, we always say in Saracens, you play your best player centre back. That's why Park or Ronan or Karen are usually like, um, and Laura Lucknan now would always put our best player centre back. So I suppose it'd be the same with Tip. Like Karen would be up there with the best. Like, so I'd either go with Eve Trassi with Arena or Karen Kendi with Arena. That'd be my pairing anyway. Yeah, because like you know Karen very well, obviously you're a club mates for years. 
And um, I, after the Cork game, um, I suppose when we lacked a bit of firepower up front, uh, Shane Brophy mentioned on his uh, podcast um, with Shane Safton that he thought maybe Bill Manning should try Karen in the forwards, that, you know, that we have uh, lots of backs and, you know, Karen in the forwards could add something. Uh, what would you think of that, Katie? Yeah, I think she only got a taste for blood with the goals last year, didn't she? And then she proved that against Waterford. It was like when she went over that line with that ball in the quarter final, it was like she wasn't going to she wasn't going to not score a goal that day. Like, and I think that's what you need, isn't it? That killer instinct in the forward line. That's sometimes what we feel like we're missing when you're watching Tip Mogi playing that killer instinct. Karen definitely has that. I, look, Etten's worth a try. Is it definitely worth a try in a league inter, inter, into a quarter final? Definitely worth or whatever the next stage and that is it's definitely worth a try there. I think. Um, Leave no stone unturned, I suppose, at this stage. It's my opinion on it is anyway. And Philly, what do you think? Um, who would be your number six to start come championship and maybe your midfield pairing? Uh, I suppose uh, I again like Karen might be a bit biased. So um I I think it's a fantastic skeleton having Mary Ryan as fullback and, and Karen centre back. I think it's a great basis to build on and um just um, Arla Dwyer, who's, who's boarding a plane on Friday to come from Brisbane back home. So uh, hopefully she'll rejoin the Camogie panel. And if she makes her place, um, Brisbane have changed her in, in Aussie rules football from being a forward to being a wing back. So maybe um, Bill Melanie should use her energy around the middle to be a support player, a bit like what Cork do with Ashton Thompson, to be on the ball all the time and feeding in more ball and better balls to the forward. So... It's just an idea from seeing her playing Aussie rules, maybe to, to use her um, level of fitness around the middle and to release um, Neil Trassi or, or Karen or someone for, for centre forward, maybe a wing forward to, to add to the score power. It's just another idea. I, I, I've no idea what um, way Bill will pick it this year. Yeah, definitely an extra option there and a great bonus to have Orla on her way home. Um, I suppose all eyes will be on Waterford and Cork this weekend. Um, We'll be hoping Cork would beat Waterford and that would put us straight through to a quarter final. Uh, Casey, how do you think that game will go? Um, I think Waterford need to get their ducks in a row. Like I know they're after change in management, they're saying it's third time in, in three years. That's hard in them. Like um, I suppose every time you, you try to regather and go again, and I suppose but they're they're relying on the same girls. Like they have a core group of players there, Bish, uh, Neve, Rockish, you know. Um, any well, they were saying Annie Fitzgerald's actually gone to Spain, but like, um, you know, they do have a, a core group of players there that that should be the skeleton of that team, like, um, and they should put down a marker. But like, you can't, you can't see it in but Cork beating Waterford after the display of that Waterford game. Now maybe they'll give it a right shake up after the weekend, but um, you know, that Waterford team didn't look like I, I often feel like that Waterford team are often built up to be more than they actually even are. Um, you know, they're saying that they should be in around that top four, top three places in in Ireland. I, I think they're that one bit short. Like they're definitely short a tip anyway. And I can't see Cork, Paddy Murray, all that crack. They're only going one direction, aren't they? They're trying to prove a point that they shouldn't have been bet last year in the semi final. So um I'd say they'll they'll definitely beat Watford. Thanks, Katie. Um Philly, I suppose like you outlined already, lots to play for still for the for the intermediates, I know Keane will be looking for a response from the defeat in Galway. Um, you pointed out there, you know, there's still lots of positives and um, I suppose they'll be looking for a performance against Kerry and a win. Oh, yes, because uh, championship is coming up very quickly and uh, there's probably six or seven places not tied down on that intermediate team. Definitely six or seven places that still have to be picked uh, so I, I would think everyone's fighting for their places against Kerry. Um, a lot of um, opportunities for girls. Uh, I think Keane put on four or five subs both weeks, so he's trying to look at the panel as well. So um, if I was playing against Kerry next week, I'd be grasping that opportunity to try and get a, a championship start. And who knows, we might we might get a, a big win against Kerry as well. And uh, Kerry are not out of it, of course. Kerry beat us; they could top the group even, so with two wins. So um, I'm, it, it just, there's no point in um, writing off Kerry because we're beaten well by Cork. Um, Kerry beat Galway, so that they're, they're a good team. Yeah, OK, we'll leave it there for um, the Little Woods Iron Division 1 and 2 League. And um, just, Philly, before we go, um, any updates um, from a PRO 
point of view, uh, club fixtures and whatnot? Yeah, just just um, under 14 is due to start very quickly now. Um, as we agreed earlier in the year, we're going to have big groups and lots of camogie, a match a week probably, groups of seven or eight in each group. So um, um, the fixtures committee have provisionally started that on June the 7th, which is the first allowable uh, day for matches, which is great. And uh, the club leagues uh, will start uh, in June as well. Uh, they're down to start the weekend of the 24, 24, 20, sorry, 25th, 26th of June. So um, we'll see lots and lots of camogie being played at senior, intermediate, junior A and junior B. And of course, we're, we're, we're welcoming a good few new teams to junior B this week and maybe uh, next week or whatever, next podcast, we can uh, have some more detail about the club fixtures. Thanks very much, Philly and Katie, for joining us on the Camogie Report podcast. So in some big news for Tipperary Camogie, uh, Tipperary Camogie, we're delighted to announce that Kieran Berg and Sports, KB Sports, are the official kit suppliers for Tipperary Camogie this year. Um, I'm sure everyone would, would have noticed in the first two rounds at Litwood's Iron Division 1 and 2 League, uh, the Tipperary girls were wearing their brand new Kieran Berg and Sports jerseys. Um, look fantastic. There's also lots of uh, official um, Tipperary Camogie gear merchandise out now. Um, you'll see I got my hands on this lovely half zip top. In other exciting news, Tipperary Camogie has also launched their brand new website, www.tipperarycamogie.com. Um, this is a fantastic new website, uh, loads of great images, lots of information, um, has links to all our official social media platforms. All the podcasts can be found there. Um, there's going to be fixtures, results, up-to-date information, and, and of course, our online shop as well, in conjunction with KB Sports. So exciting times for Tipperary Camogie and um, make sure and check out the new website and uh, thanks to Kieran Berg and Sports for coming on board as our official kit suppliers for 2021. That's all for the Camogie Report podcast this week. Hope you enjoyed the show and be sure to give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to Tipperary Camogie's YouTube channel.